In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with XOR and VR development for the Oculus Quest range of headsets. We'll use the Unity game engine, the most popular choice for XOR development. This tutorial will work for both PC and Mac users with some slight differences I'll cover. My 2021 version of this tutorial was very popular with 70,000 views. You can check that in the description. For the update, we'll be working off the most recent installations, packages and techniques. There can be a lot of gotchas, so I'm going to call those out as we go to give you the best head start. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be standing inside your very own world with all the possibilities that come with it. It's a promising time to be an XR developer, so let's jump in. Let's go to unity.com, go to C plans and pricing. We're going to want student and hobbyist. So I'm going to go with personal get started. Click on that and then we we'll want to download for Windows or Mac depending on what you're working on. And the download will start here. We're going to get a terms of service to read through. I'm going to agree. And then we're going to install it in Program Files Unity Hub. Then we want to click finish Unity setup. So welcome to Unity Hub. Here you'll see all the different projects you can work on along with ins installations and learning materials. So let's go to installs. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to work off 2021.3 because that's in long term support right now. I also tested this in 2022.3, the same tutorial, and all the steps work exactly the same. So at the time of viewing this, if you want to run it on 2022.3, you shouldn't have any issues. So go ahead. But for now, we're going to go with 2021.3. So you can just go up here to install editor, pick the editor that you want and uh, download and install. So let's create a new project. We go to new project. This is the editor version we're working on. Make sure it's the one you want. In this case, it is. We're going to pick the 3D URP setting. And in here, we can give our project a name. And we hit create project. So the great thing is you can develop for the Oculus Quest using either a Mac or a Windows PC. However, there is a slight advantage in using a PC for VR development, and that is the Oculus Link. So basically, when you're developing within Unity and you hit the play button and you've connected the Oculus Link directly to the Quest or you're using Air Link, you can actually test the scene there and then without having to build and package the entire application. If you're using Mac for development, currently the only way to deploy that to the Quest is by building the package onto the Quest headset using the Oculus Link cable as well, but then you have to play it via the unknown sources app directory within the Quest. So it's a much faster experience developing on PC and Windows at the moment, but still very possible on the Mac. We'll show you each way. If you're developing on PC, you're going to want to get the Oculus app. So go to the meta.com website, scroll down here, and then you want to download the software for Air Link and Link Cable. Once you've got Oculus installed, open it up, go to devices, and then you want to add headset. I've got mine added already, but it's not engaged or connected. So I'm going to connect the Link Cable, and now it's connected. Now, please bear in mind the standard charging cable for the Quest 2 is not sufficient to run the Oculus Link. It needs to be at least USB 3 and of a certain speed. You can buy one from the Oculus website or there are other versions that you can get on Amazon for slightly cheaper. If you're stuck, you can also run the apps via AirLink. That's not using the Oculus Link cable at all, but you'll need to have a faster router of Wi-Fi 6. Also go to settings, then go to system, go to quest link and make sure this is enabled if you haven't done so already. So the MetaQuest Developer Center has some great resources, including the MetaQuest Developer Hub, which you can download, but you don't need that for the purpose of this tutorial, but it's worth checking out later on. You're going to need to sign up as a MetaQuest developer. So come up here and let's click sign up. Now you can set up an account, do it with Facebook, Instagram, or let's say I don't have VR apps in this case. So in order to be an Oculus developer, you need to provide a credit card or set up two-factor authentication to help identify. So let's do two-factor authentication. 
once you get your code submitted. So now we have successfully verified our developer account back home. So you will also want to create your organization. So let's add an organization name and click OK. It's important to note that the MetaQuest account, the Facebook or the Instagram account that you use to log up for the developer is the same one that you're using on your Oculus headset and on your app in order for the developer settings to apply. In your Quest app, you want to make sure that it's set up in developer mode. So click on Quest, click on headset settings, click on developer mode and make sure that it's toggled on. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're set up to deploy to Android. So let's go to File, Build Settings, and switch to Android. So this should be selectable if you've installed the Android build dependencies at the start. If you don't see this, go back and check that to make sure that you installed that uh, through Unity Hub. Once that's selected, just click Switch Platform. Now that's going to take a few minutes to run, so Go make a cup of coffee, come back. Okay, so now we know it's switched over because we have the Unity symbol right beside Android. So we can close this for now. Next, let's go to Edit and Project Settings. Next up, let's install the XOR Plugin Management. So this basically maintains all the different plugins that we need to run XOR within Unity. Okay, so now that we've got XOR Plugin Management installed, we have these options here. Main ones we're concerned with is PC, Mac and Linux settings, and then also Android for deployment. Okay, so you're going to see a warning that tells you that this project needs a new input system. That's fine, we'll be restarting the editor, so just click yes. Once the project has re restarted, you'll see that OpenXR is selected, but there is a warning next to it. So let's click on that. So we're given two different issues to fix. One is we need to switch the input system and the other is we need to add an interaction profile. So let's fix the input system. Okay, so the second issue is we need to add an interaction profile. So let's click edit. Now you can also find your way here by clicking the open XOR under XOR plugin management. So currently the interaction profiles are empty. So we need to add one. Let's click plus here and it's the Oculus Touch Controller profile that we want to add. You can add more, but we're just developing for the Quest here. Then we want to also go over to Android, and we want to add our interaction profile there too. Now, something that's also very important and a lot of people skip is you need to click MetaQuest support here. So if you have an issue where you end up uh, deploying to the Quest and you get a 2D screen, the problem is that you didn't set up MetaQuest support here to make it uh, actually run as a VR app. It's an open and known issue, but this should solve it for you when deploying via OpenX or to Android. Once we've got everything set up here with OpenXR, make sure that we've done the same in Android for when we're deploying. So click OpenXR here. And we've got a check here and let's click fix all. Checking in XR plugin management, we have OpenXR here and now we have Android. We also have OpenXR set up as well. So we're good to go. Next thing we want to go to window, package manager, and we want to install the XR Interaction Toolkit. So right now we're just seeing the plugins that are installed in the project. We want to make sure that we're seeing everything in the Unity registry. So that's everything in the cloud. Next up, we want to make sure in the advanced pro project settings that we have enable pre-release packages checked. Now back in the package manager, we can see all the packages. And now if we type XR Interaction toolkit, it's top of the list. So let's drop down here, click on that, and then we want to click install. Now you might get this warning for an XOR interaction layer mask update. Uh, if this is a brand new project, which in this case it is, you don't need to make a backup. So just click no thanks. Now let's take a look at the samples that come with the XOR interaction toolkit. So let's go with the XR device simulator. We won't cover that in this tutorial, but it's good to have. 
And let's also go with the starter assets. Okay, great. So now if we look at our project explorer and we look at samples, XR interaction toolkit, you can open this file and then starter assets. And you'll see here we have demo scene. If you want to change the size of these icons, you can scroll it down and you can view it this way. So let's double click on demo scene. As a reminder, how to navigate in Unity, if you hold down on Alt and scroll, you can zoom in and out. Holding down on Alt and left mouse click button and moving your mouse around will give you rotate. And then hitting Control and Alt together gives you pan. If you want to zoom in on an object, click the object and click F for focus. In previous versions of the XR Interaction Toolkit, we had to map all the controllers. In this case, and in this demo scene, it's all set up for you, which is great. So now let's see if we can run this via the Oculus Link. So I've got my Oculus Link verified and tested cable connected to my Quest. I've got my Quest headset on, and I'm confirming that I want to connect to this computer. And then going to the menu within the Oculus Quest Home, I'm clicking on Settings, I'm clicking on Oculus Link, and I'm connecting. It should then open my Oculus Link environment. Now I can lift up my headset slightly and press play on the Unity scene. I see a black box pop up in front of me. I'm inside in the app and it's working perfectly. To exit the scene, I can double click on the Oculus logo on my controller. So now we know everything works fine working on Oculus Link. We want to be able to deploy directly to the Quest so it can be used standalone without using the Link cable. And this is also the method we use for developing to Mac. So let's go over to File, go down to Build Settings. Let's make sure again that we've got Android enabled here. We want to go to Player Settings. Once we're in player settings, we want to make sure that the minimum API level is 29, but we can actually set it to 32 as of June 2023. Next, we want to make sure that our quest is detected. So let's go to default device. Let's scroll down here to Oculus Quest 2. If you're not seeing it appear, refresh. Also make sure that you've got your cable connected and maybe that your quest is on. You can also check your Oculus app to make sure that it's connected. Next up, we want to make sure that we've got the right scene built. So right now it's got the sample scene, which was the original one when we created the project, but we want to add the open scene, which is the XR Interaction Toolkit starter demo scene. And let's uncheck the sample scene. We don't need that anymore. So when we're ready, we want to click build and run. And then we want to name this file as your build one. Find my app, I just go to app library. I can go up here to filter for unknown sources. And I can see VR Quest 2. And then I click this button. And it should take me into our Oculus Quest app, which has been deployed straight to this quest. I no longer need the link cable to run this and it will work also for Mac. Okay, so now you've got a basic scene set up. How can we add to it? How can we bring in assets and make this more interesting? So a great resource to know about, of course, is the Unity Asset Store. So I also recommend checking out Synthi Studios. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but they produce some great packs for prototyping your projects. Okay, so the asset I recommend is Polygon Starter Kit. So you can click on that here. It's free and then you can download and add it to your project. Now it's important to make sure that you're signed in here in order for it to cloud connect to your uh, Unity Hub instance. So you also want to make sure that you're signed in with the same user in Unity Hub. Let's go to Window. We'll go to Package Manager. Next thing we want to make sure we've selected My Assets in the drop down, and we can find the Polygon Starter Pack and we want to import. Check everything and import again. So now that it's downloaded to the project, we can see we have a new folder here. So let's go and open one of the demo scenes. 
This asset was made back in 2017 and probably isn't set up for URP. So how do we go about fixing this? Let's go to Window, Rendering, Render Pipeline Converter. So we want to change this setting to built-in URP. We want to select all these checkboxes. And we want to initialize converters and then hit Convert Assets. And once the assets are converted, we should have our scene. So how do we add our VR rig to this environment? So let's zoom in here. Remember, we have all this set up with the samples with XR Interaction Toolkit. So let's go to the prefabs. And then here we have the complete XR origin setup. You can also import the teleport rings and the other interactables. Um, but let's just start with this. So just simply pull it up here and drop it in. One thing to make sure we do before we start is delete the main camera. And that should be all we need to do. So let's try and play test that and see how it works. Okay, so there's so much more we can do, like adding teleport and locomotion, making these swords and guns interactable, and even being able to drive the car. We could also do a lot to optimize the scene, but that's way outside the scope of this one tutorial. Hopefully this has got you started, and I'm excited to see where it takes you next. Thank you so much for following along. I hope everything worked out all right. First time I created my own world, I was buzzing for days. So hopefully you have gotten a taste for that too. If you have any issues, I'm here for you in the comments. These tutorials take days to create. So a simple like, subscribe and comment will give me the motivation to keep putting this stuff out. So thank you so much.